Bentornati in cucina! Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to make tuna tartare, Sicilian style. So easy to make, but so tasty. Clams cooked perfectly with wine, tomatoes and garlic. What a delight. And we end with sauté calamari with sun-dried tomatoes. Mamma mia, fantastico! And today I'm going to tell you a great story that will teach you how to choose the perfect fish, the freshest fish. Come for the recipes. Stay for the stories. People ask me, say, Nick, what do you do for Christmas? There's seven fishes. And I tell them, <laughs> we do fishes at my house all the time. <laughs> it's seven fishes forever. But for those of you who keep this holiday, and for those of you that don't know what that means, uh, Italians and Italian-Americans, especially if you are from the southern part of Italy, there's this tradition that for Christmas there is no meat to be served. Rather, the whole meal has to be done with fishes. And there's seven courses that are done specifically so that each one of the courses features a different fish. And the chef in the house has the ability to really showcase his or her creativity, depending on how the fishes come out together. My father was a master about that. Many of the recipes that I have right now in my books that you see on my show come as an inspiration from what my father showed me. Uh, it was for me an astonishing education to be able to have somebody who you love so much that takes you under his wing and walks you step by step to the meanings of things. My father always said, if it looks good, but it don't taste like nothing, the fish doesn't exist. I didn't understand exactly what he meant because I was so into the plating, the beauty of things, but there's something to be said about the ability of not only giving a beautiful dress to a plate with fish, but to cook the fish so that the fish is able to bring out its soul into the plate. So that when you bite into it somehow, you find yourself subjugated by flavors that you never expected before. The key, the ability to bring out this magic is still hidden from me. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think that I cook as good as my dad did. Welcome to part two of my inspiration for the seven fishes that is the dinner that us Italians love to do at Christmas. And let me start with a very simple yet very flavorful recipe, tuna tartare. Let me show you how to make it. Tuna tartare, to me, is one of the most fun dishes that I know. Uh, it kind of came into my life in the last 15 years. It is not something I grew up with. It is not part of my culture. But I must say, the great tuna, tartare, done right, it really creates a wonderful series of uh, flavors that has completely conquered my heart, my mind, my soul. And now I try to find all sorts of different versions on how to do it. In the end, it's all based on the tuna itself. If the tuna is not of its best quality, it will not work. This is a particularly beautiful piece of tuna. The thing that makes it interesting is that the tuna is great by itself. Really, all that you need is lemon juice, salt and pepper, and you're done. But in this particular case, I wanted to add a little bit more of all these extra flavors that will make each one of the bites inside the tuna tartare the much more interesting. And at the same time, I wanted to do it in a way that everybody can do it at home with the average ingredients that they find at the supermarket and techniques as simple as one, two, three. But the first thing is I want to show you how to cut the tuna tartare in the proper dice. What I have in my hand here is a knife, which is a Japanese knife. This Japanese knife is known as Kiritsuke. Kiritsuke is nothing more than the name of the knife. It's not a brand. And it's a chef knife. What I love is the point, the slight rocking that it does have, and how sharp it is, because it does scare me. I'm gonna take a few pieces. Make a small serving, but I wanna show you how I go about cutting the dice. Once we get to this point, what I like to do is to take the various pieces. Now, it's extremely important that the knife be this sharp. If it's not, you will shred to the fish. So invest in a nice sharp knife. It does not need to be my knife, but one that will not betray you. And then what I like to do is to make a quarter inch dice almost. 
And as you see, I go in a sewing motion. Why? I do not want to push down because you're gonna bruise the fish. Rather, I want it to come off as I cut it. People do get hurt if they don't pay attention. You notice how I'm holding my fingers like this? This is known as the claw grab. The claw grab allows you to basically use the, the knuckle of your finger to push everything away from cutting your finger. So it's almost like a built-in security guard. But at the same time, do not move fast. When you go to the restaurant and you see these astonishing uh, chefs that make sushi moving as fast as they do, they are professionals. They do this day in and day out, just like I do pasta. But when it comes to this, keep your fingers and enjoy your life. The most important part of the flavoring is the spice. What we have in here is parsley, basil, mint, very Sicilian, very important. You could also put, if you want to at this point, garlic, but I think that the garlic is almost a little bit too strong for that. These are onions that I chop super, super fine, as you can see. I'm gonna add a little bit of those. Some people like to add pine nuts. It's a great addition you can make if you want to, but in this particular case, I prefer not to because I have something else set aside. These are also pieces of tomato, which as you can see, I have diced very, very fine. The last bit is a little bit of avocado that we have mushed up and we're now gonna add. Now, I'm using a spatula that's made out of silicone. And the reason why I'm doing this versus something made out of steel or made out of wood is because you want to move everything very, very gently, just like this. And here we go with just a little bit of lemon juice. color, the flavor, oh mamma mia. And uh, the last thing that I like to do is just a little bit of olive oil to bind it all together. And this is extra virgin olive oil, do not use extra light. You wanna taste the olive oil in this particular dish. The elements are all in here. And this is not something that you want to let sit in the refrigerator or here. Once it's made, you want to serve it right away. So let me show you how to plate this. Look how gorgeous it is. I mean, you can really see how spectacular. Now, there are things that other people do when you go to other restaurants where they put the oil down at the bottom. I don't want to have it touched. This is perfection as it is. It's a fantastic little meal, but more than that, it's full of flavors, it's full of passion. It's easy to make for everybody. And this is how you make tuna tartare. My father tried to teach me a great deal of techniques on how to be able to select a fresh fish and to be able to select the best one, specifically by focusing on the look of the eye. And the idea always is the eye is the symbol of life. You can see from the eye, the shininess, the brilliancy of the eye in the fish that is showcased for sale, how old the fish is and if it's still worthy to be used uh, for a family meal. My father and I, however, in this particular case, had a significant parting of the ways as to how to handle the fillet on a fish. My father, rightfully so, I must say, I was wrong, I still am wrong in doing it my way now, believed that the fish should be cooked whole uh, with uh, all the fish bones attached to it and to be served out of the fish bone before it's served. Sometimes the easiest things in life are the best. Let me show you how to make one of my favorite dishes, clams with tomatoes, wine, and garlic. Very easy to put together and yet with a unique flavor that soon will come with the heart of all the people that done at your table. Let me show you how to make it. The oil is getting nice and hot. And uh, as we are getting ready for a recipe, keep in mind that the flavoring that we're gonna have out of the clams will be from the water that's inside the clams. Uh, it will be the wine, uh, it will be the tomatoes, uh, and all together cooking, they render a finished product that in my opinion is one of the most seductive flavors I've ever had. Maybe it's because it reminds me of Sicily and I feel like I'm there every time I have it. But let me show you how to do it just right. The oil is nice and hot, so the first thing that I wanna do is spice it up a little bit. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of red pepper flakes because the spiciness of it always attracts me. As you notice, I actually have uh, the onions cut very, very thin, so we're gonna add a little bit of the onions as well. One of the things I like to do is to cook over medium heat. I don't like to cook with super high heat when it comes to this. Why? Uh, I like for the onions to really soften and glisten slowly. As they do that, they have an even deeper flavor than when you cook them on very high heat and they start to get little burnt uh, licks on the outside, which looks beautiful, but really what you have done, you seared in all the flavor of the onions instead of letting the onions impart the flavor into the sauce. In this case, instead, I find that the medium heat yields far more flavors than what you'd expect. Next thing we're gonna go with is garlic. And what I've done with the garlic, I cut it nice and thick. So here we go, look how pretty that is. The garlic is, in my opinion, <laughs> maybe my middle name. I put it everywhere. If I could put it in dessert, I would too. Something else that I like, like at this very point, to add a little bit of the parsley. Here comes the part that I love just as much, tomatoes. Do you have to make the tomatoes so small no, you don't have to, but it's so much more fun. I have told you, I got myself brand new knives and all that I can do, I'll find an excuse to cut anything. My wife says that I'm a maniac. Uh, plus, I think that when you cut them like this, a small quarter inch cube, that enormous amount of beauty to it all. This is the base, and now in this base, we're going to add the clams. One of the things that you gotta realize is for these clams to taste great, they gotta have a good time. And what's the best way to ensure that the clams do have a great time? And that is wine. White wine is the best wine to use in this case, and here we go. Now what you want to do is to stir everything about to make sure that all the flavors are mingled just right. And you want to wait until this gets to a nice boil. Okay, now we got to a nice rolling boil. At this point, it's important that what you do is you cover the pan, you reduce the heat to medium, and let the clams open. Now, the clams are just about ready. Most of them have opened up. There's always one or two stragglers that don't. You need to get them out, so that's what I do. This is one of them that did not perform properly. Keep looking around, make sure there's no others. You guys see any? Come on, indicate it to me. Here's another one. And by the way, this is typical when it happens. It could be transport, it could be the way in which they were storage, either both at home or at the store, but it's just part of the game. In this particular case, I think we got them all. All right, these guys are done. The next thing that I want to do is to finish up the sauce, but I don't want to do it with the clams in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the clams out. Now, we're going to crank up the heat, and let me walk you through the intent of what I have in here. And why is it that I'm doing this? I want the opinion that for things to really work, not only you need to understand the recipe and the sequence of all the actions that you need to do, but it's extremely important that you understand the spirit, the essence, the beauty of it, which is not written, but is intuitive. And at this process, what I want you to follow me along in this travel that I'm taking you through as to what to do with the broth of the clams is by reducing it even further on a fairly robust heat, one of the things that we do intensify the flavor. But I don't want for this flavor to go away. Rather, the one thing that I want for this flavor is to actually become a little bit in case into beauty. What does that mean? Well, when I spell beauty, especially when it comes to this, to me, beauty is aided by softened butter. So watch what I do. We got all the heat that we have wanted so far. So the one thing that I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to turn off the heat. Why? Because I want to add the butter. What difference does it make? And why am I doing it this way? If you were to add the butter with the heat still going hard and strong, you would actually cause to the butter to separate and create 
really, in my opinion, nothing more than a greasy puddle. Instead, as it mixes on the inside slowly, as the sauce will come down and cool off a little bit, the butter will give this wonderful glossiness to it. It will paint it with a shimmering color that's splendid. And the flavor that you will get with the bread, because you're gonna use this with a lot of bread. If you think that all these clams are gonna be gone by themselves, trust me, it's at least a two to three loaves of bread kind of a thing. This by itself is a meal that bypasses most of the pastas I know, and you know that I love pasta, but when it comes to clams, vongole, it's a whole different thing. Well, there we are. We got the sauce ready, the clams are ready. Let me show you how to plate them. And this is what I call a portal. I not only feel young again, I think of all the people who are no longer amongst us that meant so much to me and the development of me as a human being and as a chef. Amongst these chiefs is my father Vincenzo and my mother Massimiliano. And this sauce, as it goes down, will be something that will make him squeal with joy. My father loved the flavoring that the clams do bring to the dish. He loved the sauce. These are some of the things that are just as fun as cooking. You think you just put together something wonderful? What well, you created for yourself is a portal of a time, an essence of a second, an essence of a minute that you got to spend with your family and with your friends. And every time you'll make these, you will be able to go magically, instantly to the very moment and remind yourself that after all, life is beautiful. And this is how you make clams with garlic, onion, tomatoes, and a wonderful wine sauce. I am almost overly passionate about the art of filleting a fish. I have more knives for filleting that I can possibly tell you about. For each type of fish, for each kind of cut that I need to make, my father found that always offensive. He felt that if I cook the flesh of a fish away from the bone, I would miss out an enormous part of the flavor of it. So one of the things that I did to compensate and I think it was done specifically as a direct compensation, I mastered the art of sauces so that I could use the bone, the head, and everything else that I would not be able to use after I fillet the fish for creating this deep broth, this deep fumets, these deep sauces that would continue the singing of this wonderful harmony of flavors that my father had taught me. I would like to say that I am a man on my own, now in my 60s, fully equipped to handle all sorts of situations. But I find myself always, even when I cook for myself, as I try to prove a point to myself, that I always go back to these elemental teachings. And I can hear my father's voice in the back. Ma che fa, Nicolino? Too much salt. All the too much pepper. All the, the fire. Hi. And my, sometimes my wife walks in the kitchen. She looks at me and says, who are you talking to? <laughs> who am I talking to? <laughs> I'm talking to dad. I'm quite convinced that he listens because the dishes that come out are spectacular. And try calamari with sun-dried tomatoes. This is my interpretation of an old-school Sicilian recipe, ideal for any fish dinner that you want. It's a fantastic, simple, full of flavor appetizer. Let me show you a tomato. I have to tell you that calamari has a particularly important role in my life. My father wanted to uh, teach me how to be a man, and uh, he taught me how to basically take apart a calamari for dinner, a fresh one, actually many fresh ones. Uh, he wanted me to learn how to take the tentacles off, the beak, the skin, uh, and he found that, that unless I know how to do those things, I would never know how to cook him. And he was right. Calamari is something that uh, requires respect. Another reason why I have a connection to calamari is because the first uh, job that I got at a restaurant, uh, once I was moved away from washing dishes and onto the prep team, <laughs> <laughs> My job was to clean calamari. They said, ah, you're Sicilian, you know how, you clean the calamaris, and I did. And I had to do cases and cases of this calamari. It took forever to get it done. Uh, we got the oil in here uh, that's nice and hot, and so what we're going to do right now to this oil, we're going to add the calamaris. One thing that you'll notice with the calamari is that as they cook, they start to curl. First thing that I like to do is to cook the calamari in here, and I want you to see the miracle that's taking place already. 
As the calamari is starting to cook, you see how they rise up, they form their own rings, they stand up on their own. And this is the part that is super important to me. When it gets to this point, the one thing that I like to do is to actually take the calamari away for a moment because I like to make a braising sauce in which this calamari will find their new personality. The oil that's left in here, here we start now with all the ingredients that are so important to us. First, garlic. Together with the garlic, a little bit of pine nut, very Sicilian started. Together with the garlic and the pine nuts, what we have in here is fennel. Why fennel? I don't know what it is with us Sicilians, but fennel is almost like at the very center of many of the fish dishes that we make. Uh, it has uh, a licorice-like taste to it, and it marries it with fish in a most wonderful way. So here we go with the uh, fennel in the pan. Now, because this has a unique personality of its own, some of what we want to add next is sun-dried tomatoes. The sun-dried tomatoes, and it's important that you know this, were packed in olive oil. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add black olives. These are Kalamata olives, without the pit, of course. Just a little bit of chopped onions, and very finely chopped. Lemon zest. and a little bit of basil. So, keep in mind that we're cooking everything on medium heat. You don't want it to go too high. Mamma mia, che bellezza. Guarda quanto è bello questo. You have to forgive me, but I smell the aromas of my youth in here. It is at this point that the calamari are ready to join the party once again. And here we are, placing them back. is now that we want to incorporate the calamari with all the ingredients. And you want to let them cook like this on medium heat, not higher than medium. Stirring attentively to make sure that nothing sticks at the bottom of the pan. The next ingredient I'm about to add will surprise many of you. This is arugula. arugula uh, it's very peppery, uh, it's got a strong personality. What I have done, uh, because I want to treat this as an appetizer, I have chopped up the arugula quite finely. One of the things that the arugula has, which is extremely interesting, that when it cooks, it actually has a very soft finish to it, almost creamy-like, and something that I was not aware that is typical with just about any lettuce I've ever used in the making of any sauce. A discovery and a surprise. It collapses quite quickly, so you can actually put large quantities. This is a full cup of chopped arugula that I'm adding to it. And now, the greatest thing ever, and that is the addition of lemon juice. This is the juice of one whole lemon. The same lemon that I use for the zest. Why is this important? What does it do for us? What this does for us is extremely important because it brings a flavoring to this, which is not based on wine, is not based on salt, not on anything. And so far you have noticed that I'm letting all of the ingredients play for themselves. The last thing that I'm going to do is taste the back of my spoon. And definitely the only thing that I would want to do is just a tiny bit of salt. And here we are. Calamaris are ready? Let me show you how to play. This is a simple 
fisherman dish that we have elevated to a whole new role. And the simplicity and the beauty of this <laughs> has a magical power to it. I feel like I'm a kid again with my father. We used to go to the little town of Mondello nearby Palermo to buy fresh calamaris. I remember when he first taught me how to do it. I remember how grossed out I was as a child touching it and how much I enjoy eating them. My father said, if you want to eat them, you got to learn how to clean them. And this was the big first test that I had in the kitchen, and I succeeded. And this is how you make calamari with olives and sun-dried tomatoes. I think that the most beautiful thing about food is that it's not a fixed rule. It's an ever-expanding beauty. And as it expands, uh, it's like surfing. You get the wave, you surf it just right, it's going to take you for the most beautiful ride of your life. I have to tell you that when it comes to cooking, I fail far more than I succeed. But even when I fail, I learn something to improve. What is that I will do the next time? And for as long as I wake up in the morning, there's the sun outside and I'm full of life, cooking is a beautiful thing. And cooking with fish, if you do it right, man, that's the best thing that there could be. Only I gotta find a way to buy fresh fish again. I think I'll take a trip down to St. Peter again.